Okay, so this was a really hard project for me because I don't like to talk about, like, I'm fine with talking about what I went through, but I don't like talking about the facts about it because facts can get very, very skewed. And people constantly are misunderstanding eating disorders because, I mean, people with eating disorders are seen as vain. And these people assume that all they care about is what they look like or how other people view them, which is a really big part of having an eating disorder is that, yeah, you do care so much about what you look like or how other people view you and that it can take away from it, everything else in your life. But that's not all it is. And people assume that, you know, in media you see diet tips and magazines online, on TV. You know, you hear people, I mean, I even heard today somebody eating a bag of chips and they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to be a fat ass today. And it's because of things like that, which don't cause eating disorders, but they certainly help. And I just kind of want to like kind of debunk that and just kind of hopefully get people to at least care a little bit or understand a little bit more about, you know, eating disorders. It's a really big issue only because they're so deadly. And I mean, I mean, in the United States alone, there's only 8 million people that suffer from eating disorders. And that only represents about 3% of the population of the world. So, I don't know if by the end of this you guys will care, but I'll care. So when I was a little girl, I, um, I was never skinny. I never have been, I probably never will be. But my weight was constantly being judged, critiqued. Since I was about five years old, my mother had always started telling me that I needed to lose weight or I needed to eat healthier. So from a very young age, it was put in my mind that skinny equals beautiful. And so if I wasn't skinny, I wasn't beautiful. And I grew up most of my life like that. I grew up most of my life believing I was ugly. Uh, I didn't deserve love. And that's, and that's not what my mom wanted to, you know, you know, put upon me. She didn't want me to think that I didn't deserve love or I wasn't beautiful because she told me I was. But it was because everything that I heard my friends say, uh, that I heard my father say, my grandmother, what I saw on TV and online, made me believe that I, I, I couldn't be loved because I loved because I was fat. And as time goes on, I look back at pictures and I, I wasn't even fat. But I was bigger than what was normal. So, growing up, yeah, I cared about my weight and I didn't think I deserved love. But it wasn't until maybe freshman year of high school that the eating sort of really kicked in. I didn't even know I had one. Uh, I, was put on, uh, I was put on medicine for ADHD and they warned me that it might suppress my appetite. I, I didn't really know what to think. I was kind of indifferent. I was like, well, maybe this can help me lose weight. I mean, I need to. So I started taking the medication and at first I didn't, I didn't really feel anything. It felt like, you know, I just had a lot of energy, but I was still hungry, so I still ate. But then slowly, I started, you know, having these thoughts. I was like, well, I'm not hungry anymore, so I eat. So I started a diet. And the diet was, I ate maybe one meal a day, constantly drank water, weighed myself maybe six to seven times a day. And at night, I would stay up till about three o'clock in the morning, researching how many calories are in fruit. I would look up how many calories are in a single grape or in an apple. I stopped eating some fruits because I thought they were too fattening for me. And I lost about 37 pounds in about a month because I rarely ate. I never slept. As soon as I would, I would take my medicine and stay up late and do all this research. And then I would go to the gym from about 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. And it went on like that for a couple months. And then I ran out of my medication. And because I was abusing it, I couldn't get more because I couldn't tell my mom that I was abusing my medication. And I was ashamed. 
I was ashamed that, like, this is how my life was. I mean, I was happy, at least what I thought was happy, because people started noticing. People started complimenting me on my, you know, on my weight loss, asking me how I did it or what can they do so they can lose weight like me. But, I mean, I, I was still heavier. I was still what they considered to be fat. And nobody got concerned with the fact that I wasn't eating. Nobody cared because I wasn't skinny. If you see a skinny girl not eating, people just assume, oh, she's anorexic. And they get worried about her. But because someone like me wasn't eating, nobody cared. It didn't seem to concern them. My mother even started complimenting me and asking me to help her to lose weight. And I went on like that for about a year. In my sophomore year, my mom took me to a psychiatrist um, where I got diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Uh, and then I told her about my eating habits. So about December of 2015, I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder, which is not very well known. Which basically binge eating disorder is where you eat a lot, but you usually hide it. And then I mean, you just have these overwhelming amount of shame and hatreds towards yourself. So you may never eat in front of somebody, but you'll always eat in secret. And I went on like that for about another year, being treated for this, them giving me more medications to suppress my appetite. But of course, I, was, I didn't tell anybody because I was happy that they gave me medicines to make me not hungry. And about April of 2016, I told my mom everything. I broke down one night in her room and I told her everything. Because in that short time between December and April, I rarely ate. Whatever I did eat, eat <laughs> I either threw up or I exercised you know, for hours until I either passed out or threw up. I mean, I was miserable, but at least I was losing weight. At least people were noticing. So in April 2016, I told my mom and she tried to get me into a residential. That is where I went for several months. Uh, but they couldn't take me because I hadn't had any previous uh, eating disorder treatment. And then something happened to my brother. And so the focus went to him. And so I was left untreated for months. Until about maybe September of 2016. And I went to Dominion Hospital for uh, depression and anxiety. And they didn't really help with anything. I came out worse than I was when I went in. Um, and I stopped going to school. I mean, before I came here, I hadn't even gone to school in about a semester. The whole semester I wasn't in school. Because I couldn't leave my room. I was too ashamed to leave my room. I felt like... I didn't deserve to walk the earth because I was ugly, I was fat, because, I mean, I let down my family. So the day before Thanksgiving, in November, um, my mom took me to Center for Discovery. It's a home in Fairfax where people with any kind of eating disorder, they come in and they receive treatment. I spent two months in there. I, from the day before Thanksgiving till January 8th of this year, I was in there. I was so motivated going in. And about the second day there, I stopped trying. I stopped eating. I stopped talking, writing music, anything. I begged my mom to take me out, and she refused. I begged my dad to take me out, and he refused. And I cut myself off from my family because I was so mad that they were trying to help me because all I cared about was losing weight. You see, my entire life, I, I never had control over anything. My parents' divorce, it, my brothers, everything. I never had control. And so this was my way of gaining control. This was my thing, and somebody tried to take it away from me. I'm not the only one. So, mine wasn't so obvious. My eating disorder was 
I mean, if you looked at me, you never would have guessed I would have had an eating disorder. I was always smiling, always happy. I always was helping other people. And that's why it's called the secret illness. You can't tell just by looking at a person whether they have an eating disorder or not. I mean, you can see someone really skinny, like sickly skinny, and they, could, they, they, they might not even have an eating disorder. Half the people that have eating disorders aren't underweight. People assume that with anorexia, you can't be anorexic unless you're skinny. Um, you can't be, people assume you can't be bulimic unless you throw up. That's, that's not true. I have bulimia. Um, I got re-diagnosed in November. Uh, they started putting me on the right treatment. And they took me off all the meds that suppressed my appetite. And it started helping. Well, I didn't think it was helping, but it ended up helping. But I had several friends in the treatment center that had anorexia and were normal, normal weight. I had several people that had bulimia and they didn't throw up. It, the amount of knowledge that people know about eating disorders, it, it, I mean, it's nothing. It's practically nothing. All they, a lot of times when I ask somebody what they know about an eating disorder, it's, it's nothing. Anorexia, you don't eat, and bulimia, you throw up. That's it. And I may be very confusing up here, and this can be really hard to understand. So I'm doing my best. <laughs> um, but with the secret illness, I mean, half the time people, I, I had no idea I had an eating disorder. And I've had an eating disorder since I was 11 years old. And I had no idea. I mean, there was no way to know. All I knew is that I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. Uh, there was something wrong with me. But I blamed myself for it. I mean, why couldn't I just lose weight like everybody else? One of my best friends is in a treatment center right now. She's been in there for about five months and she won't be coming out anytime soon. She has a very, very severe case of anorexia. And nobody knew because she didn't look like it until she was in the hospital with a tube down her throat because she hadn't eaten in about a week. People don't realize how serious that this can get. I mean, eating disorders can kill you. They start out as a mental disorder. It can be caused from your environment or genetics. But whatever it is, it starts out as a mental disorder, but can quickly become I mean, a physical illness. People with eating disorders can, their heart rate can start to slow down. Their blood pressure can drop. They can get osteo osteoporosis, which is for your bone density. Like, it, your, your bone density goes down. You have very, very weak bones. You can start to lose your muscle to the point where you can't stand up anymore. Uh, you can't, I mean, the standing up can make you pass out or your, your muscles just kind of give out. You become dehydrated and, and your kidneys can start to fail. You can faint, which can cause even more damage if you fall on your head. Your hair starts to fall out and your skin starts to get dry and, and your nails become brittle and thin. And in cases of anorexia, you can grow hair all over your body because you come, become so thin that your body can't keep itself warm and it grows hair everywhere just trying to survive, trying to keep you warm. I mean, these are things that could kill you. And like this quote says, we accept the love we think we deserve. People with eating disorders tend to be very secretive.
like I said, it's a secret illness. They're very uh, ashamed of how they are acting or feeling, or they don't want somebody to stop them because they think this is, this is how I deserve to live. This is what I deserve. When you try to help somebody with an eating disorder, some people can be very open and accept treatment, like I was at first. Um, but then I was put in treatment. And like I said, I started ignoring my family because I was angry at them. Like, how dare they put me here? I don't, like, I don't, I didn't think I had an eating disorder. I didn't look like I had an eating disorder. I, I refused to believe, whether I was diagnosed or not, I refused to believe. And even to this day, I still struggle with the thought, like, you know, I, I don't have an eating disorder. They resist help. They don't want to talk about it. They'll act out. It, they just don't believe it's real. They don't want to believe it's real. And you may try to help them, and you can, and, and you should. If you think you know somebody with an eating disorder or might have an eating disorder, I mean, you should know the signs. Constant dieting. Sometimes they'll either talk about dieting all the time or they won't talk about it at all. Hiding food or food wrappers. I find, like, when I, when I went off to uh, treatment, my parents went into my room and just found, you know, the food because they hadn't seen me. I rarely ate with them. I didn't eat during, I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat during lunch. Uh, I did eat very, very little during dinner. So when they went into my room, they found the food. Usually in the middle of the night. Uh, I'd take food and you'd, I'd eat it in my room and I'd hide it because I was ashamed. I didn't deserve to eat. They'll eat in secret or eating to the point of discomfort or pain, self induced vomiting. They might use laxatives or diuretics. Exercising, I mean, if you know somebody that goes to the gym constantly and constantly and I mean, somebody could have an eating disorder, and they may not know, but if you think you know, you, if you think they might be in trouble, I mean, don't just wait. Don't just, you know, pretend it's not there. And if somebody goes to the frequent bathroom trips, like after eating, or if you go out, or they're in the bathroom for a really long time and their shower's on, or, I mean, these are all can be signs, or, I mean, it they're tricky. It's hard to talk about because I only know what I know. I'm not an expert. I, I just know what I experienced. So recovery. Recovery is a never ending battle with eating disorders. It's something that can, I mean, you will always struggle with it. I know people that are, or, I mean, old women that still have eating disorders. I'm lucky that I got the help that I got, that I have a family that loves me and did everything that they could to get treatment. So, recovery process. It starts with talking about it telling somebody, a friend or a parent or a trusted adult. And then research. I mean, I spent months looking at places before I even told anybody that I could go, therapists that could help. I mean, I saw several therapists and, and nobody could help me. I think the first person I told about it was my best friend. And it's awful as I feel about it now, I, I threatened her to, you know, keep quiet. I mean, I told her if she told anybody, I, I couldn't be your friend anymore. She kept that secret. But it got to a point where I wouldn't get out of bed anymore. I'd either eat nothing or everything. And she couldn't keep it in. So she forced me to tell my mom, and I'm really glad I did now, but at the time, I mean, I was so angry. My mom was very understanding. She didn't always react the best, but 
the end of the day, she understood because growing up for her, she was told the same thing she told me, was that she was fat, that she needed to lose weight, and she'd never be good enough. So I sat there and I cried on her bed for what seemed like hours. And the next day, we called a center for discovery and set up an assessment. Within a week, I was in. I went in, like I said, the day before Thanksgiving. And the first couple of days are always the hardest. You're always you're away from your family. You, I mean, you're in some place new that's making you do things that you really don't want to do. And the reason I picked this quote is because, I mean, it did seem impossible. It still seems impossible. I mean, I struggle with it really, like, I, I still really badly struggle with this. I mean, every day is a new challenge. Coming into school, dressing how I want to dress and not dressing how I fe feel like I deserve to dress. I mean, if I dressed like I feel like I should, I mean, I'd be in sweatpants every day. Baggy t-shirts. So it's a battle every day. Coming in, facing people. Still haven't mastered the cafeteria because I'm terrified. And who knows if I'll ever eat in a cafeteria again because I graduate next year. But one step at a time. I come into school and I wear what I want to wear. I, if I eat lunch, I'll eat it with the nurse or with my counselor. I'm trying. And I don't want anybody to have to go through what I went through. And I know there will still be hundreds of girls and boys that, that will go through this. But if I can even start small with the, like seven of you in this class, I feel like I did something. So if you know somebody with an eating disorder, or even if you're just concerned, tell somebody. They'll forgive you eventually. That's it. Well, yeah, dude, that's awesome.